Thanks, Louise, and kia ora tato, everybody. It's great to be here, and I'd like to congratulate the EPMU for calling this meeting. Is there a crisis? There sure is a crisis. And if you look at New Zealand in terms of where we are, we used to be around about the lowest, in, uh, or three or four, in terms of unemployment in the OECD. So we used to be among the best. Today, we're not amongst the worst, but we've slipped to 14th. We've got 162,000 people officially unemployed. We've got 270,000 people jobless, 110,000 people who want extra hours, nearly 54,000 people who've gone to Australia in the last year, and we've got 40,000 jobs lost in manufacturing. And behind those statistics, there are people, there are families, there are communities, there are businesses. So we stand unapologetically for decent jobs and a living wage. Our definition of competitiveness is based on high value, not on low pay, and there's a world of difference, and that's where manufacturing comes in. We know, of course, the government can't rescue every business. How could they? But why is manufacturing so important? Well, it's transformational. It adds value. Technologies and modes of manufacturing are changing fast, but they have strong multipliers, spillover effects into other jobs, into services, and it establishes a high platform for other economic opportunities. And it's being talked about all over the world. This is an OECD publication that makes a really strong case this year for the value of manufacturing to modern economies. So <coughs> it also reduces inequalities in terms of inequality in terms of income. So manufacturing is vitally important if you want decent jobs and a living wage. So what can be done? We've only got a few minutes, so I have to be quick. So I've divided it into big levers around monetary and fiscal policy, an industry policy level around manufacturing, and then support for firms in difficulty. So around the monetary and fiscal, well, obviously widening the policy targets agreements in the Reserve Bank Act, so employment is included, is, is an issue. Uh, promotion of tools other than interest rates around monetary policy, setting out options around intervention on the exchange rate, and I'm sure we'll hear quite a bit about that today, is another area that can be looked at. Capital gains tax, so that you get more investment in the productive economy. In Europe now, there's active consideration being given to financial transactions taxes, greater support for research and development around tax credits, issues like accelerated depreciation so that you drive more investment in technology and get more capital per worker, which is an underlying issue for productivity. And it might be a stretch, but we could even look at some defined export tax credits where it's got a strong value-added dimension. So that's at that level. At the level of industry policy, well, we could actually have a government procurement policy that works. For instance, you could have industry participation agreements that really do drive a commitment to use local industry in as much of manufacturing as you can. It's not a total either or, either for foreign or domestic. It's if you're spending $500 million on electric multiple units for Auckland, how much of local industry can you drive through that, including workers employed by Kiwi Rail at Hillside? What conditionality? There's a lot of conditionality on beneficiaries these days, isn't there? What about conditionality on businesses that are getting support from government around apprenticeships, around high-value um, jobs, etc.? Higher subsidies for apprentices and work-based training. Boosting renewable energy use is one thing that's been mentioned by the OECD in the, in the document I just referred to. What about actually looking at the uh, KiwiSaver funds and the government creating more of an investment fund for local equity in firms. So there is an opportunity to do that. Active labour market processes that if workers are unfortunately displaced, say you might not be employed here but you're valuable to this industry, this region, and therefore we will, <coughs> as the Scandinavians do, wrap income and training support around you. Um, greater promotion of lean and other productivity tools to spread high performance work practices. Uh, we know that in two weeks time in South Australia they're going to launch with the assistance of Goran Roos a manufacturing strategy. They see that as relevant. Why can't we have one of those? 
Some of the good things the government has done, very rare, but the Advanced Technology Institute, what role could that have to extend support to manufacturers? And what do manufacturers suggest? So that, I've just given a bit of a list. And then finally, for me, more support for firms. And that means a leaving no stone unturned response. When we get these large scale uh, redundancies being announced, sometimes with long lead times, why can't the government really throw all the agencies in there and get a lot of support for people and leave no stone unturned? And what's happened to effective regional and industry development policy that would be there for firms in that situation? And could there be transitional support such as suspensory loans or bringing back the nine day fortnight job support scheme if it's a matter of hanging on for six months or so to get through a difficult patch. So for us, it's making decent jobs a priority. From here, I think it's great you've got the sign on. CTU is signing on, I'm happy to say that. Uh, we need to meet the government, I think, but it should be manufacturers and the unions going together and saying, you know, how much of what we're looking at can you sign up for? Um, and I think that should happen as soon as possible. Thanks for listening. Kuamutu taku korero tēnā koutou katoa.